Hello there everyone, Dream the Nostalgia Main here. Before we get started, I wanted to give a big thanks to all of you for helping this channel grow to where it is today. Your support has motivated me to continue looking for more ways to improve this channel, and it's because of all of your likes and subscriptions. Thank you all so very much. So for today's video, my mind is again drawn to the possible future of Banjo kazooie or if there is one. It's hard to believe that it's been almost two years since the reveal for Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. I don't think it can be overstated how amazing it is that these beloved characters are alive again in the biggest fighting game ever created. If Microsoft and Rare's intention was to jumpstart the franchise, they couldn't have asked for a better setup. The fact that so many of us were happy about a single second of CGI in the Sephiroth trailer shows just how much these characters mean to us. Plus, we've had a good variety of new merchandise that has honestly been unprecedented in the entire history of the series. It is a very good time to be a Banjo fan. And while there are mixed opinions about their fighting style, there are a growing number of dedicated Banjo mains like J-Play who have continued to optimize the character, and although I'm, I'm far from a top tier player myself, I have fun every single time that I play as them. With all that being said, as great as it is to see them again in any form, the big question still in all in our minds is, will we actually ever see a new Banjo-Kazooie game again? Is all this new exposure just a legacy celebration, or is it part of a carefully laid out plan for a true return to gaming? I've done a few videos about this topic in the past, and I wanted to go over what I talked about in those briefly before moving on to my main theory for today. So last fall, I talked about possible new developers for a new Banjo-Kazooie game outside of Rare themselves, and I included Double Find and Toys for Bob in that list. Since I've made that video, these developers have deconfirmed that possibility. In December, Tim Schafer, the head of Double Fine, said, I think it's nice that people think about this when they think about that game, because I think it's definitely inspiring and I really like that game. If they think of Double Fine when they think of brightly colored platformers, it's great they think about us, but we'll make something new that people like just as much. As far as toys for Bob, they've recently been reassigned to support Call of Duty Warzone for Activision, although they have clarified that they will continue providing support for Crash Bandicoot 4, which I think may include potential DLC. In retrospect, Activision is probably a more difficult third-party option for Microsoft to work with to bring back the series, and they probably would go for a smaller third-party route like they did with Dalala Studios and Battletoads. In the end, trying to predict a new developer for Banjo-Kazooie can be a very difficult process, especially if we're talking about outside the Microsoft circle. We'll just have to wait and see if Rare or any other developers decides to step up to the plate. In another video I made back in December, I talked about this image from an Xbox promotional video showing a furry, distinctly rare looking creature. I think the evidence is pretty strong that at the very least, this was a deliberate reference to the Banjo-Kazooie reveal trailer as the imagery is pretty similar. A lot of others have commented on the video that this could also be Conquer the Squirrel, another long dormant rare character. There is definitely a resemblance, and I wouldn't be surprised if there are some plans in place to bring back this other character as well. If you want to check either of those videos out, I left some links in the description down below. So moving on to today's main topic of discussion, I've recently learned about a theory that may be hinting at the return of Banjo-Kazooie beyond Smash. This theory was explained to me by Arctic One over on Discord, who will be directly quoting in some parts here. He wrote, Theory is that Rare's Smash design is going to be used for the game solely because the new pieces of merch that is in Community Made features extra details not present anywhere else. Stitches on the shorts and the belt, for example, what solidifies this, though, is that the first four figures has released statues of Crash and Spyro before the remakes of the games, which feature designs from these remakes. And that's true. The first four figures Crash Bandicoot model was announced on June 9th, 2017, before the release of the Crash Insane trilogy on June 30th, 2017. This statue is based on an official render here. First four figures also announced a Spyro statue to be released for an estimated date of quarter 1, 2018, with the Spyro Reignited trilogy releasing later that year in November. The exact same kind of pattern continued when first four figures announced a new statue for Banjo-Kazooie in February of 2019, a few months before the Super Smash Bros. Ultimate reveal, and Cable Guys announced a Banjo-Kazooie controller holder merely weeks before then. Going back to Arctic One here, he explains, both the Cable Guys, the Amiibo, and the statue feature extra details not present at all in older designs of Banjo, and they're made by different companies. Now, as far as I know, the Smash model can't be used outside of Smash and Nintendo merch, and Rare didn't create the new design strictly for Smash. The details in question? Note the backpack stitching doesn't show up in Smash, 
probably because the Smash team took liberties based on Rare's model. It's barely visible in Cable Guy's banjo, but it's there. It's not fan made unlike the fan gamer stuff, so these companies had to follow a clear design, and straying off of it isn't much of a choice. They can't take liberties set by Rare. The fur is extremely detailed, the feathers are strikingly the same color from the amiibo, the backpack, shorts, and belt having stitching never present in older games, Nuts and Bolts uses the old stitch pattern, and the leg arm transitional fur is very detailed. For things to look the same between three companies, Rare must have provided them with a 3D model to work with, since statues, figures require a 3D model to build upon. This idea of Rare providing a 3D model makes sense because Rare was very involved in Banjo's Smash inclusion. After the reveal, they said, It's been a tightly kept secret, but we've been collaborating closely with the Smash team on this crossover since last year, and everything from movesets to musical choices, and while a core group of folks at Rare worked on this, we have to give a special shout out to our own Paul Cunningham, who has been our point man on getting everything about Banjo and Kazooie's appearance just right. Still, the question before all of us today is, is all this really still just for Smash? These new models and merchandise may be nice and all, but is all this just a quick nostalgia cash grab? I think that some more recent announcements by first four figures point out that this may not be the case. On May 5th, they announced a Banjo-Kazooie PVC statue is in development now. Facts for Banjo-Kazooie pointed out, it might be an entirely new statue of Banjo and Kazooie, rather than the same pose. They only confirmed a new PVC statue, not the same statue with PVC material. They also just announced details for the previously announced Mumble Jumble statue, and revealed a new crocodile Banjo figure as well. This statue notably has the same stitch detail in the shorts and backpack. Also, in the stream detailing these statues, we got a bit of a glance at the Mumble model that was used for the figure. So to wrap things up here, if we follow the same pattern established by first four figures with Crash Bandicoot, Spyro, and with Banjo-Kazooie, I think we have a fairly solid case that more Banjo-Kazooie content is on the way. We of course do have E3 coming in June, and that very well could be when a new game is announced. Of course, bear in mind that there could also be something announced later this year, like at the Game Awards in December. And of course, uh, always bear in mind to hype responsibly. I wanted to also give a big thanks to Arta1 for explaining this theory to me, and I'm glad I was able to share it with you all. Let me know your thoughts in the comments section down below, and please support the channel by dropping a like and subscribing. Until next time, see ya!